for the question and answer session at the end of the session. First of all, before we proceed, let me briefly introduce to you the panelists for today, Mr. Ayman Amri. Mr. Ayman Amri, or better known as Ayman Psychology, is a mental health advocate who actively spreads the awareness of mental health among Malaysians. He is a speaker and book author who wants to educate the society about psychology through talks, social media channels, and writing on his own website, ayamanpsychology.com. He also has published three books to date. Not only that, he has a wide exposure in raising awareness in the field of psychology and human behavior. Throughout his effort in educating the public, he has been featured in a number of mainstream media outlets such as Mingguan Wanita, Pa and Ma, Cosmo, Astra Awani, Bernama, TV Al Hijra, Malaysia Hari Ini. He had completed his BSc in uh, Psychology from the University of Nottingham, United Kingdom. Currently, he is pursuing his dream to become a certified clinical psychologist by contributing his expertise at Pusat Pakar Psychology Jiwa Damai Sha'alam as the manager for Academy Jiwa Damai and teaching assistant for early intervention program. So how are you today, Mr. Ayman? Hi, Alhamdulillah, I'm good today. That's really great to hear, Mr. Ayman. So to, for, for today's session, Mr. Ayman will enlighten us about the mental health in the legal industry. And as we all know, each job has its own difficulties and it is in, na in nature when humans face difficulties. Their mental health will take a toll. Thus, maintaining a good mental health is important in order for us to work efficiently. Thus, let us not wait anymore and hear from Mr. Ayman directly about this topic of what can be done in addressing the issue of mental health in the legal industry. So, Mr. Ayman. Okay, thank you, Adrina, for the introduction and hello, everyone. Assalamualaikum and a good evening. Okay. All right, we have about 26 participants, including me, including Azrina, so 24 people in here. Everybody good so far? Are you doing well? Or you already burnt out because of direct continuous to the screen? Fine, you're fine. Okay, thank you, Hakim. Okay, all right, uh, for our session today, we have quite a short time, but I'm going to straight to the point to our session today. I will show you the slide so that you can see better about the content today. Okay, the program I we our session today will be consists about mental health in legal industry. However, I hope you don't mean understand as I did uh, when I say mental health in legal industry. I thought that the the organizer asked me to present about the reality of mental health in the legal industry. Uh, however. Uh, Actually, the content that I was asked to present is more about how you guys can handle more about your mental issues, especially during this pandemic issue. Especially as a law student, plus you are currently doing online distance learning. So how can I help you in terms of managing your mental health during this pandemic issue? So just a bit introduction for before. I don't think uh, my name is Aiman. You can call me Aiman or people usually know me as I'm Aiman Psychology. And I'm currently doing master in master in clinical psychology in UIA Komba, or IIUM, International International Islam University Malaysia. Okay, so enough about me. I just want to know about you guys. Can you guys write in the right in the chat section? What is your name and what are your emotion right now? Can you write about your situation and your name and your emotion right now in chat box Cindy calm thank you my name is Hasfa and I'm quite excited to be honest Nur Alia Kistina excited to join your talk thank you Tommy a bit anxious about assignment ha, you and me both my name is Fatin Sofina. I'm a little bit tired, but looking forward for this session actually. Hi, Mr. Ayman. My name is Alia Zafira from UITM. Hi, UITM. Adila, excited. Ng Yung Chi, a bit tired. Ha. Hopefully, we can go, we can pass through this together. Mr. Ayman, Tan here. Kind of stress with all the tasks and assignment given. My name is Nurul Iza. I'm pretty excited too. Okay, whatever your emotion, I hope all of you are doing well. All of you are doing good and most importantly, please take care of your mental health just as important as your physical health. Uh, the thing, I am calm and relaxed now. We are same break now. Wow, untungnya. Okay, our session today, uh, 
Okay, your 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 the introduce your name and my name is Aiman and my emotion right now is quite nervous actually, uh, because it's been a long time since I present to a law student, uh, so kind kind of, kind of nervous. But it's okay. Nervous is a sign of excitement. Yeah? Okay. Uh, how, however, your emotion right now. I hope you you are doing good. You are doing well, and I hope you we can understand that. We can start this program. I want you all to have this mentality that the perception of knowing mental health is important as physical health. Without mental health, there is no complete health. Meaning that whenever we say an issue about mental health, I want you to have this kind of mentality just as you see people are struggling with physical health. For example, if you have a, we have a friend who are struggling with heart disease, or cancer, or diabetes, or broken leg, or any kind of mental health issues, we can give them treatment, we can give a good uh, positive feedback, we can give positive environment, we can show supportive, we can post in the Instagram, hashtag get well soon. So I hope we all can have this kind of the same mentality for people who are struggling with mental health. And especially you as a student, you are struggling with a new mental health issues that we're going to talk later after this. Okay, I want, I want you to imagine a situation, maybe tonight, a close friend, maybe your close friend that you really close that you're maybe sharing the food together, sharing your crush together, eh, sharing uh, any kind of sweet memories together. She or he contact you, telling that they are feeling down and stressed. They are feeling down, feeling stressed because of assignments too much. They already missed the assignment. They, so they have to submit a lot of assignment in a short period of time. And you as a friend, you have four kind of response you can give to them. The first one, if you can ask them, can you be more positive? Alah, don't think too much lah about it. Or B. You're not the only one struggling with this, okay? I'm struggling too. I also have my assignment to do. Or C. Patient, okay? This is all a test for you. Or D. It's not easy to face this. I don't know how to help, but I'm here. Which one is going to be your answer? Alia D. Liang Ha D. Liang Hua, sorry. Cindy D, Tan Yong Chan D, Anissa D, a lot of you are choosing D in here. However, if you choose differently, but you didn't write in the chat section because of your pressure, I hope you understand that all four of these questions, four of four of these answer is true. All of them are correct, but the difference is which one is more suitable at that at that time, specific time when people are telling us that they are down. Which answer are the most suitable at that period of time? Okay, is there any other option? Uh, maybe you can have another option. This is just most, some of the common answer that I get usually when people are struggling with depression, struggling with mental issues. So this is some of the common some common answer. So any other answer you give, just remember that not all of these answers are suitable at the right time. Uh, maybe A you can. A, B, C, D are correct answer, but depends on the timing. All right, I just I want to show you a short video about stigma of mental health in Singapore, and I hope that you can relate it with our situation in Malaysia. Let's watch this together. You can be born perfectly rich, have a very good lifestyle, have parents who care very well for you. I don't think mental health issues discriminate against anyone of any race, gender, or social background. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Please have a seat. My name is Nicole. I'll be your moderator for this discussion. I'm Nicholas. Today, I'm going to ask you a few questions about mental health in Singapore. What do you know about mental illness? I just know there's depression. Oh. Uh, you say that uh, bipolar disorder the wire short circuit you know this guy's crazy sell all these kind of words it has nothing to do with me would you hire somebody with mental health condition i'll probably you know make them work in a you know a admin site super cleaner or some simple job for them either they hurt themselves or they're going to hurt someone else. then if you're mental illness you apply for a job 
man who in the right sense will really want to take you. Would you date somebody who has uh, a mental health condition? Some of them will get quite manipulative. They'd say like, um, if you break up with me, I'll, I'll cut myself or I'll kill myself. And then sometimes they tend to post unreasonable things such as like a small thing that happened and then they'll make a big fuss out of it. I cannot handle. I don't know how to handle. How would you react to, you know, a friend or family member who's diagnosed with mental illness? The bridging needs to be the family and not a stranger. If possible, I would just stay away as far as possible. I didn't introduce myself fully. I suffer from clinical depression. I was clinically diagnosed with depression. I'm living in recovery. And I overcame it. I wrote a letter that I would like you to read out to me aloud. Twelve years is a long time to live with a mental health condition. In the twelve years that I've been diagnosed with depression, this is what I've learned. I've learned that the greatest battles we fight are the ones with ourselves. I've learned that most conversation about employment and the moment I review my diagnosis. I've learned that shame is something society teaches you. I've learned how to say sorry for showing symptoms of my condition. I've learned that friends can disappear and I will never hear from them again. I've learned that family doesn't always know how to support you, no matter how much you need them. I've learned that hope is a little voice that whispers maybe. I've learned that recovery is a process. I've learned that one small crack doesn't mean I'm broken. I've learned that I have an illness, but this illness is not my identity. I'm so sorry that you have to go through this. I'm so sorry. Do you have any questions you want to ask me? Okay. This video is about yes, someone want to answer. <laughs> Sorry. So everyone still okay, eh? Okay. This video is about stigma of mental health. And just a simple question. When you see this video, a lot of people are giving their stigma. They're giving that. Uh, mental health is a uh, why you shout sucker. Uh, this guy crazy, shout, stay away from him. But stigma is something dangerous actually. The reason why I always use this uh, mentality, I use, I use the, I, I want to break the stigma first before we start this session, because stigma is very dangerous. Stigma is something that our mind made up of something that we don't know, but we relate with something that as if we know about it. For example, uh, the people in the video, they never heard, they never see people with depression, they never met with psychiatrists, they never take psychology course in the university and so on. However, when it comes to the topic about mental health, they create their own perception about that topic to make them know what is the topic is all about. But the thing is, the perception is wrong. And the wrong perception is what we call a stigma. Because stigma is very dangerous. From stigma, it will make the people who are struggling with mental health issues afraid of getting help. And when they're afraid of getting help, the, the condition will become worse. And when condition become worse, the stigma will increase. And when stigma increase, they're afraid of getting help. And they're afraid of getting help, the condition worsens. And the cycle will keep going on and on and on and 
on until someone finally break the break the cycle that we call as awareness your presence today you attending this workshop is your first step in fighting the stigma because if you have still if you still have the stigma you won't be attending this program or maybe you came to the program but with the mind of trying to hijack this program saying that ah mental health ni people are not religious enough or maybe they're not be they cannot be positive uh, they just think too much in their mind but because of you trying to break the stigma you want to know what it's all about you attend this session and you really want to learn about this so for that i thank you for attending a round of applause for yourself <laughs> it's online program so i have to imagine that you have everyone is clapping your hands right now okay but it's okay Short summary is part of the rules that we have to do in online learning. All right, uh, time for a quiz, a simple quiz. We're going to do a simple game because I know that this is uh, afternoon and people are already getting tired of the session since morning. So I try to make our session today a lot of a lot of activity rather than uh, one way talk like this. So I want to do a quiz for you guys here. And your role in here, if you can, if you can find the annotation setting in the Zoom, you can find the annotate setting, and you can choose your own stamp. Uh, if you're using phone, the logo usually on down there, like a pen logo. So just click that. Try to write something in the slide. Or uh, if you're using laptop, you can find a three dot setting. Then there's an annotate setting. Choose a stem rather than writing. Choose a stem uh, like Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, any stem that you can you can choose. Uh, love, star. Any. I forgot what's what. I mean, what are some of the stem that we have? Or oh, we have right arrow, cross, question mark. Uh, maybe you can just draw with your hand any kind of stem that you can give. Uh, just put your stem under the line. Just so that I, I know that you've already found the setting for this. Because we're going to do a quiz and this quiz will be using your own stamp. Okay, thank you. If somebody delete all the stamps. Okay, all right, thank you. Now for a quiz. I show you a simple statement. And what I want you to do is, you have to put your answer according to the statement. For example, the first statement. Feeling depressed and having depression are the same thing. If you think this is a fact, put your stamp on the fact. If you think this is a myth, put your stamp on the myth. Okay, two of you said this is a myth. Agnes also said this myth. Fong said this myth. Fatin, thank you. Adila, Maisara, thank you. Ah, uh, it's okay. Alia delete all the annotation. Ah, uh, it's okay. No worry about it. Okay, some of you, some of you say this is a fact. Okay, the answer is, it's a myth. Have, having depression and feeling depressed are two different things. Uh, feeling depressed is a feeling, it's a severe sadness when you feel down, you feel like you are on energy. But having depression is a diagnosis. Uh, maybe the same symptom, but the condition become worsen that affect your daily life function. So it's not the same as a feeling, it's an illness. Second, a person who does not feel stress means they are not mentally strong. This is a fact or a myth. Adila, thank you. Jung, thank you. Agnes, Wong. Fatin, Maisara, Alia, Cindy, thank you for your answer. Yes, this is a myth. A person who does not feel stressed means they are not human actually. Because no matter how strong you are mentally, you need to feel stressed. Because stress is part of your way of life. It's part of being human. If you Because stress have two kinds of stress. De-stress and you stress You stress is the stress that is good for you that will make you do better in your life. For example, you have an assignment to submit. So because of the stress to submit the assignment, you need to study a lot. So studying is part of making you learn new things. But de-stress, 
the second type of stress is a stress that make you become worse of your condition uh, for example the same situation you need to submit assignment but because of the assignment maybe you have to submit about six assignment in one day so the stress is too much it become a burden to your mind then it become a mental health issues okay so you need to feel stress uh, don't don't manage don't reduce the stress but manage the stress and the third one last one is mental issues occurs due to spiritual and religious factor is this a myth or a fact doesn't matter what is your religion uh, based on the study in asia most of the stigma related to religion is always about saying you are not religious enough that's why you have a mental health issues however this is a myth because mental health issues it's not really extreme saying that it's purely because of religious at the same time it's not really religious not not playing any factors but mental health issues we have four components that need to be fulfilled the first one is biological part uh, maybe they need to take medication something wrong with the brain the chemical imbalance and so on so biology the second one is psychology the thinking itself uh, maybe the pattern of thinking they have a lot of negative thought they are overthinking they have become uh, overwhelmed with the burden of of the mind and so on so they need therapy for this the third one is social which is they need the social support for environment they need uh, environment that support them accept that you have their problem a family are very supportive about their condition and the last one is spiritual and this is the most important part it's part of the mechanism but it's not the only thing that make people who are, have mental health issues so spiritual is a very good protective factor but it's not a preventive meaning that preventive is something that can uh, prevent you from having the issues but religious is not preventive religious is protective meaning that if you have a problem religion can become a very good uh, protective means that a very good source of hope for you to keep fighting okay so let's do the last activity we are out of time actually i want to do an activity together with you uh, what i want you to do is i want you to uh, write in the chat section what do you think the category of the symptom let me show an example this is a, a list of symptoms that people usually struggling with during this pandemic issues for example feeling anxious uh, shoulder pain lack of sleeping headache social isolation loneliness sadness chronic fatigue loss of pleasure self criticize and so on we have about 16 and all of these symptoms is categorized by four different type of category category emotion thought physical and behavior so let's say if the symptom is about lack of excess or lack or excessive sleep eating is this category of emotion thought physical or behavior can you can write in the chat section this is the activity we do together my answer will depends on your answer okay so people said this is behavior okay all right what about social isolation social isolation emotion Talk, physical or behavior. Okay, some of you said talk. Okay, a lot of people say talk, so I put in talk. Feeling anxious and tense often. Emotion, okay. Uh, don't worry, I'll tell you the reason why we do this after we finish the activity. The loss of pleasure. The inability to feel pleasure. Okay, some of you say emotion, some of you say talk, so I just put in between. Uh. <clears throat> Lack of focus. <clears throat> okay, talks, all right, that's good. Loneliness. Emotion, okay, that's good. Continuous sadness. Obviously, this is emotion, sadness. Lack of or excessive sleeping. physical okay so we say physical self harm and suicide behavior okay emptiness okay 
Okay, alright. So I'm just say emotion. So I just put here emotion. Self criticize. Thoughts. Okay, that's good. Suicide ideation. Physical. Thoughts. Okay. Emptiness. So I'm just gonna jump to the answer because we are short of time. The answer is here actually. Continuous sadness, emotion, uh, emotion, thought, physical behavior. This is the answer actually. Don't worry, the recording will be given to you after this, so you can refer it back. But the reason I do this is because the first one, when you are struggling with any kind of mental issues, you need to differentiate which one of the symptom categorized by which category. For example, if you are feeling sad, this is an emotion. So what we need to do is whenever you are feeling struggling during this pandemic issues, try to do a four column like this and try to list out all of your emotion, thought, physical and behavior during that moment. And after that, uh, I have uh, an assignment for you. What you need to do is you need to learn about behavior activation. Uh, behavior activation. Behavior activation means that all of these symptoms, when you categorize, let's say the emotion is negative, your thoughts are negative, physical is negative, behavior is negative. So what we need to do is behavior activation means that we believe all of these symptoms are related to each other. So when you change the behavior, become positive, all of this will also change, become positive. For example, if you are feeling social isolation, social isolation. So you're feeling socially isolated because let's say you have continuous sadness, lack of focus and loss of pleasure. This is for example, eh? okay. Okay, let's say this is the one that we choose for this uh, example. Then we open to Q and A after this. Let's say emotion, you have continuous sadness, talk, you have lack of focus, physical, you are loss of pleasure and behavior, social isolation. This is all a negative symptom. However, when you change the behavior, you fight the social isolation by mingling with others. You talk to others, maybe you call, have a video call, or we have a chat with your friend, your family in the house and so on. So your, your talk automatically the lack of focus become more focused because you are able to vent out all the struggle in your mind. Maybe you don't need to talk about your struggle, but when you talk to someone, our emotion, we feel happy. We have this kind of social pleasure effect when you feel satisfied talking to others and your behavior as well, we also change because from the negative one, physical also change because when your mind become positive, your body, the loss of pleasure, maybe you feel happy, at least a little bit happy of during the struggle. This actually, this, this technique is quite complicated, but I try to compress it in a five minute because right now we have to open for q and I've been asked to open for q and So anyone who want to ask something, you can open your mic and maybe Azrina can lead for the Q&A session. Um, okay, so someone asked, uh, do you think that bosses and judges have unrealistic expectations of lawyers which causes lawyers to suffer from mental health problems? Okay, in general, actually not just boss and judges in terms of uh, legal industry, uh, based on the study that uh, from Penang Institute showing that majority of the management in Malaysia in especially the corporation that is with a corporate companies uh, with uh, maybe 500 to 500 and above of workers majority have a realistic expectation in terms of they are this stigmatizing the mental issues they are thinking that mental is not part of mental is not something that you see as a physical huh? so the reason can be a lot can be various. Uh, unrealistic expectation is one of that. But however, I would say that right now companies, a lot of big companies started to see mental health as as important as physical health. So a lot of them have started to do like a new policy. For example, I give you uh, in Petronas, they start to have 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, the name of their policy is Minda. Minda or I forgot, but they have a specific like uh, you know when you go to the when you're working in a in an industry under a corporation and you go to the clinic and you can claim as a panel, right? Uh, so this is the same. If any of you have a mental health issues, if you're working under Petronas, you can go to their any selected panel, get a treatment in terms of therapy or counseling, and that is covered under panel under the corporation so this is one of the way of companies trying to fight about this so your question from adnan is quite specific related to unrelated expectation uh, however uh, i can't answer in specific because the context of your question maybe depends on the company itself but generally speaking uh, management is one of the reason not reason one of the contributors in a mental issue among the workers. Okay, thank you, Mr. Arman. Does anyone else have any other questions they would like to ask? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ayman. Yes, good afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Ayman, for, for sharing that. We'll indeed do a sharp reflection after this. So actually, I have questions that I'd like to pose to you. Like, um, this is, a, uh, I'm so sorry to my dear friends over here. This might not be interrelated to legal industry, but I believe it's quite closely connected to our daily life. So I used to have an experience where um, as a leader of the team, I have uh, some of the members suffer from depression. Uh, depressions. So apparently as a leader of the team, we would choose to be more sympathy and understandable about their situations. So of course, we would try to, uh, try to um, cope with, the person who is suffering with his or her workload, but the other members choose to not being sympathy about or, uh, about that depressed uh, members, and he or she um, reply me by saying that why is it because he is suffering from depression and everyone of us need to cover up her part. So I'm just I'm just wondering about if you face this kind of situations, how would you tackle with this? Um, statement, I believe. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's a good question. Actually, uh, nowadays because of the awareness is getting good, getting better, and people start to use the term. People start to accept the situation of depression, anxiety, and so on. Uh, however, sometimes it become a reason of disability. Uh, saying that, for example, Tommy's uh, example of situation when the group excitement, one of that of fighting with depression and saying that we have to cover about that part and so on, like you mentioned just now. So for me, uh, actually, if you, uh, depression or any kind of mental issue is not supposed to be, uh, it's not supposed to be what we call as uh, something that stops someone or become an excuse. Because we acknowledge that a people who are struggling with a certain mental health condition, However, when, become, when it becomes an excuse, so I think the best way to deal with this is for the person, if, you, if your mental health condition starts to affect your daily life function, for example, your contributors in the group excitement, it's better for you to take a leave. Uh, just uh, if we see this as a physical issue, eh, for example, uh, some of our group uh, some of our assignment, some of our members in the group assignment cannot come to the library during discussion because they are having, uh, let's say, they are having chemotherapy for the cancer. Uh, so of course, we're not going to say that we're going to cover for him because that this that's his or her responsibility. So the best way for this, if you know that you are do, if your treatment or your condition make you unable to function. Uh, in society or in the group, it's better to take a leave, focus on the treatment first, then come back after your condition become better and you can contribute more. Like, or maybe you can, we can say as a function normally. This is one of the advice usually we give to the student. Uh, before this, I have uh, experienced student with in UPM. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, UPM. We, uh, the counselors advise the student to take a leave because she have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, absence in attendance uh, for the class so she used the she used the reason of having depression and which is true because she is struggling with mental condition she have a diagnosis from the doctor have a proper letter so 
they advise her to take a leave, focus on the treatment, then come back one semester late from the friend so that you can focus on your treatment. So that's my response. All right, thank you. Welcome. All right, um, maybe we can take one more question. Does anyone else have any other questions? Mm. No? Okay, um, so I think that's it. So thank you so much, Mr. Ayman. There were great questions and answers from both the panelists and our fellow, fellow audiences. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's session. Uh, thank you so much for everyone participating. We really do appreciate your interest in this very important issue. Also, I would like to thank our panelists. Um, uh, thank you for your time and sharing. We will be sure to make full use of it and appreciate it so much. Hope to see you all again in the future. But before everyone leaves, please switch on your camera so we can take a picture for this session. All right, Alia. We'll... Okay, um, give me a minute. All right. Okay, on the count of three, everyone, please smile. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Two. All right. All right, thank you so much everyone for um, giving your fullest attention and thank you so much, Mr. Ayman, for your insight. We'll be sure to make full use of it and stay safe. Um, you'll be directed to the main room after this, everyone. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ayman.